Welcome to our lecture online and here's an example of how to use Ampere's law on a problem. So let's uh, read the problem. It says, find the magnetic field one millimeter from the center of a current carrying conductor that is six millimeters in diameter. So you're right inside the conductor if it has a current of 50 amps. And then it asks, what is the magnetic field 30 centimeters from the center? And that means that now you're outside a conductor. So what is the magnetic field inside a conductor and what's the magnetic field outside a conductor? Okay, so let's uh, make a drawing of that. So here's our conductor. We blow it up so I can see the fine detail. Let's say it has a current I equals to uh, 50 amps. And imagine then that the current flows throughout the conductor evenly everywhere. So you can imagine something like this where current is flowing everywhere through the conductor, the edges, the inside, all throughout, and let's say that's uniformly distributed. So now what we're going to do is we're going to realize that the radius of the conductor is equal to six millimeters. Nope, that's the diameter, so the radius is half of that, so the radius is three millimeters. And we're concerned, or we're not concerned, but we're interested, that's a better way to put it, to find out what the magnetic field is one, mil, one millimeter away from the center. So let's make that small r equals one millimeter. And we want to know what the magnetic field is at that particular location. So imagine then that we have a Gaussian, uh, not a Gaussian surface, but an Ampere circle around that center where the radius is one millimeter. And using Ampere's law, we can say that the uh, line integral of B dot DL is equal to mu sub naught times the current enclosed by that circle. And of course, here in this case, the circle has a radius of one millimeter because we want to put the edge of that circle right at the point where we want to know what the magnetic field is. Since it's nicely symmetric, we know that, and we know then that the B field will be uh, parallel to the circle anywhere along the point of the circle. So that means that B will be constant at that point. We can then take B outside the integral sign. And we can write that B times the integral of DL. And of course, since B and DL will be parallel, the cosine of the angle between them, which is then zero degrees is one, we could simply write it like that. And this is then the line integral of uh, the integral going all the way around the little circle that's equal to mu sub naught times I enclosed. So the next thing we do is find out what this integral is. It's simply the circumference of that little circle, the radius is little r, so we can write then that b times 2 pi times little r is equal to mu initial or mu uh, sub naught times i enclosed. Now the last thing we need to do here is find out how much current is flowing to that little portion of that conductor. So it's going to be the total current going through the entire conductor times the ratio of the cross-sectional area of the little, little circle divided by the cross-sectional area of the entire conductor. So I enclosed is equal to the current flowing to the whole wire times the ratio of the cross-sectional area of that small little conductor, which is pi times little r squared divided by the cross-sectional area of the entire conductor, which is pi times big r squared. And so pi's cancel out, and it's simply i times the ratio of little r squared divided by big r squared. And that we can put in there. So we can say that b times 2 pi times little r is equal to mu initial times total current times little r squared divided by big r squared. Then we can see that this r can cancel out one of those, and then we can divide those, both sides by 2 pi, so we get b is equal to mu sub naught divided by 2 pi times i times the ratio of little r over big r squared. And now we're ready to go ahead and plug in some numbers to see what that is equal to. So this is equal to mu sub naught, which is 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7. That would be Tesla's meters per amps. We multiply that times the current. We said the current was 50 amps. We then multiply times the radius of the little circle, and that would be one millimeter, which is one times 10 to the minus three meters. Then we divide that by two pi, and then we divide that by the radius of the conductor squared. It's a three millimeter radius, so that's three millimeters, or three times 10 to the minus three quantity, and that would be meters, and that would be squared. All right, now we need a calculator, and I have one handy here in my pocket. 
Before we use it, we can see that uh, this pi cancels out this pi, and this 4 becomes a 2, that becomes a 1, and now we're ready to go. So we have 2 e to the 7 minus times 50 times 0 0.001 equals, now we divide that by 3 times 10 to the minus 3 squared, that's 6 times 10 to the minus 6, so divided by, that would be divided by 6 e to the 6 minus equals, and it looks like we have a B field strength of 1.67 times 10 to the minus 3 Teslas, because meters cancels out meters, and this cancels out the second one, and then amps cancels out amps like that. So we end up with 1.67 times 10 to the minus 3 Teslas. Now that's the magnetic field inside the conductor, one millimeter away from the center of the conductor. Does that mean that the, the field will get stronger as I go further and further out? And the answer is yes. Remember that the B field is a function of the radius of where we're at inside a conductor. Uh, that will then continue, and as this gets bigger, the B field will get bigger as you go further and further out. And it looks like it's a linear relationship. The B field is proportional to the radius to the first power, so where you're inside the conductor. Now the next part is we need to find the magnetic field outside the conductor. So now we draw a new circle around the conductor. Now we're the radius here. Let's call that radius sub 2. The second radius equal to 30 centimeters. And now we do the whole thing over again. We go through the same process. We know that the, um, <clears throat> oh, I shouldn't call it a big R because that makes it confusing. Let's make it a small R, just like we did before, but I'm going to call it R sub 2. So we're going to have the same equation like we did before, the same condition, same equation. And so now we'll end up with b times 2 pi r sub 2, because now we're dealing with a much larger radius circle that goes well beyond the conductor, is equal to mu sub naught times i enclosed. And now you can see that in this case, the i enclosed is going to be all of the current through the conductor, because the entire conductor is, is uh, circumvented by your ampere circle. So that means for I enclosed, in this case, it will be the entire 50 amps, and R2 is simply the distance out to where one node the magnetic field. So we can then write this as B is equal to mu sub naught times 50 amps divided by 2 pi times the radius of the circle. That means the radius out to the point where one node the magnetic field strength. Plugging in the numbers, uh, this would be equal to mu sub naught is 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7 teslas meters per amps. We multiply that times 50 amps, and then we divide that here by 2 pi times the radius. In this case, the radius is 0 0.3 meters. And again, the units cancel out, becomes teslas. This 4 pi cancel out with this 2 pi, that'll be 1, this will be 2. And then plug in the numbers in this case, what do we get? So we have 2. Uh, e7 minus times 50, and we divide that by 0.3. And it looks like the magnetic field strength there, the B field in this case is going to be 3.33 times 10 to the minus 5 teslas. So that's the magnetic field strength way out here, 30 centimeters from the center of the conductor. Here, this was the magnetic field strength inside the conductor, just one millimeter away from the center. Now, what about the direction? Well, we use a right-hand rule, current is directed upward, so the magnetic field will be in the direction this way around the conductor. So if we use a red color to indicate the magnetic field direction, so here the B field will be in this direction, here the B field will be in this direction, here the B field will be in this direction, and here the B field will be in this direction. So it's going to go around like that, counterclockwise looking from the top. And of course, for the outside B field, It'll be the same. Again, we use the right-hand rule. B field will be directed around like this, so the B field will be outward like this in all directions, B field. And coming here, it will be the B field. And down here, the B field is in this direction. So for the outside circle, we have this as a result. And then for the inside circle, uh, we have this as the magnitude of the B field. And that's how you can use Ampere's law to find the B field inside conductors as well as outside conductors.